So everything that we go over in this video is available in book form for the price of $10 on my website. All you have to do is uh, hit the link in the pinned comment or in the video description. This is worth every penny. I will prove to you how much work went into this by watching this video, but you can also have a synopsis for only $10. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Merrill from Metal Detecting NYC, and this is your one-stop shop for completely understanding target ID for the XP Deus 2 metal detector. We indeed did a deep dive. We rang up over 600 different objects, and the first thing that I will point out to you is you want to look in the video description. And here is why we have everything in chapters and timestamps. You don't usually bookmark videos, but this one you might want to bookmark if you're not buying the guide, because everything is in the video description. If you're curious about something, you just look it up in the video description, click on the link, and it will zoom to that time frame in the video. One last call to action before we get on to this video. We're going to make a deal here, an offer you can't refuse. If you learn something, if you see how much time and effort went into this, please do two things. One, hit the like button. Two, if you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. You better believe there's going to be more great educational and fun content on my channel, Metal Detecting NYC. Oh, it is game time, folks. We have the XP Deus 2 and the XP Deus 1 metal detector, and it is time to create a target ID Bible. I have a chart that goes from one all the way to 100 and beyond. We can, you know, 99 is the top for the dais but we are going to be testing metal detecting finds and seeing where they fall and by the end of this you'll have a complete understanding of target id for these machines where gold falls where silver falls where junk happens because when you metal detect you know the junk happens and i'm going to be creating a guide for you that summarizes all of this. Everything in this video is timestamped, so go down to the video description and you can see the parts. Uh, it's probably going to go a little bit long, but this is meant to be consumed in parts, so make sure that you hit uh, the different timestamps for what you're curious of. All right, so I have the general program on for Deus 2, I have the basic program on for Deus 1. First question in my mind. Is the target ID the same? Yeah, I mean, we could make two separate videos. It sure would be handy if we could handle this in one. So let's do some testing. All right, so test one, we have a clad quarter. And let's... Ninety-six, we'll call that. Let's see if it rings up the same. Let's see if it rings up the same. 96 to 95. In short, when I put it in single frequency, when I put the Deus 2 in single frequency, it was a lot closer to the Deus 1. There you saw like a one point difference, but there were differences uh, between the two. So we're going to save the Deus 1 for another uh, Target ID Bible. All right, so I have done this a few times before. These are actually the numbers from the Nocta Macro legend uh, that I still have here. And uh, it's gonna be different. Uh, the difference is uh, that one goes up to 60 and the dais is a lot more spread out. It goes up to 100. But for the most part, you see, it's a scale of conductivity. What this is, is a scale of conductivity. And you have iron, which is a lousy conductor of electricity at the bottom of the scale. And then there is super silver. 
no, really, we have some bombshell surprises happening in this video. It's not that simple, at least with this detector. And size also has to do something with this. The bigger, the thicker of the item, the higher that it's going to ring up. And for instance, uh, I'll prove to you in a bit, if you put a few pieces of gold together that ring up at a certain number, uh, a, a low number, like let's say that uh, they ring up somewhere in the 30s, if you put them together, it might ring up in the 50s. We'll experiment, I'll show you that. But anyway, let's get this skill going, I suppose. Let's do iron first. And I tell you, compared to other videos that I've done on the same topic, target ID, uh, if, I'm only going to show you something if, if there's something really interesting about it. One, irregularity in shape, that also brings a difference in ring up. For instance, if I do it like this, meaning showing this side, That's bouncing all over compared to here, flat side. More of a flat zero, you know, so there's a difference with the way that I hold it, a difference, you know, when there is an irregular shape. And I suppose you could say the same thing if there's a coin on the side versus uh, when it is flat. And we're gonna be trying to do, we're gonna keep everything uniform flat. Okay, so iron. Geez, zero. I don't have a zero on my board. So let's actually make one. We're gonna use one of these plates. This will be our uh, zero right here. Okay, I just had my first wow moment. Zero. Zero. Wow, consistent zero with iron. I spoke too soon. So these are zero, but uh, we, we're seeing a variety uh, of numbers. So this one, for instance, two, three. So it is very much like other detectors. For the most part, we have a very normal range though, and it ranges from zero, this is zero, and we have, uh, you know, the basic iron stuff. So, only other question marks are these crucifixes, and this is consistent with the Nocta ring up. Here is the larger one of the two. One. And here is the smaller one of the two. Also one. Very interesting. Like I've said, I've made this video multiple times with multiple detectors, and there are anomaly items. And uh, that those crucifixes were anomaly items, not just with this detector, but others. It rings up in the iron range. The content of the metal of those crucifixes, I'm not sure, but the earrings that you saw on the board, uh, some of them at the very least tested uh, to be gold. Uh, that could mean that it was gold plated. And uh, I have heard of jewelry having iron on the inside as an armature. So it could that could be um, the reason for the uh, pieces of jewelry, but um, those crucifixes certainly don't look like iron pieces, yet they ring up at, uh, as iron. Okay, on to the next. One of the things I'm leaving out, especially today, is foil. Uh, that is a bit of a wild card. Uh, when it is bunched up, I mean, it could get up into the mid-tones, uh, but for the most part, it's 1 to 50, and there's no consistency with that. So, mentioning it in a Target ID video makes sense. Um, actually, testing it that would be a waste of time because it varies so much in thickness and in consistent shape. All right, we're getting to the good stuff. But uh, next thing that we are going to isolate are the junk signals, the pull tabs, the bottle caps. Uh, I'll say this, this is a aluminum bottle cap. The iron bottle caps uh, are all over the place but aluminum uh, has a very set range. So I will show you that and I will show you 
my glorious collection of pull tabs and where they fall on the board. Okay, so we tested. And <laughs> that's the annoying one at 95. That's an aluminum bottle cap. All of these are aluminum bottle caps. They have a consistent ring up. Again, iron is all over the place. You see bouncy numbers. You hear iron with it. You could tell uh, a little bit that it's a bottle cap. The XY screen also helps a lot with that. But um, these, you have a range based on the size that they are. Like for instance, what I mean is you get the smaller ones that don't have the ring, you know, missing the ring. Those ring up a little bit lower and you get a really, uh, you get the majority at 72, 73. But um, there's no one set number that uh, all of these fit. So you have to remember that. Um, if anything, these videos prove to you, you got to dig anything. And we're just getting to the fun part. Oh, it is time for bullets. Then we're getting into silver and gold. It's re important to remember that irregularity in shape brings you an irregular ring up. All right, so bullets, in fairness, I have uh, different ages of bullets mixed in. Like this is a more modern one and uh, you know, to musket balls. And basically, uh, it tops out at 84, uh, these musket balls, and uh, low 80s, you see a lot of these bullets. Um, it skips, it goes down to the 70s, 76, 75, you see bullets. It crosses over into the, uh, the pull tab range. This is why you dig everything, 72. Uh, you have some at 69, 68, and that was the lowest one that I had, at least that I've tested. So for the most part, you could say your bullet range is 68 all the way up to 84, and you have a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and ages in there. All right, so for the book that I'm writing and the video that I'm making right here, I wanted to give you variety. So these objects, you know, they're not symmetrical in any way, but uh, we're gonna take a look at their target ID and put them on the board. All right, first thing is a junior police badge. 62. Civil War era boot plate. 84. Bell. Ninety-three. New York City sanitation badge. Sixty-nine, we'll call that. Pocket knife. So this has iron in it, but as you can see, there's other metals. Fifty-eight. Toy car. Pewter or lead. 81. Skeleton key. 88. Another skeleton key. 56. Skeleton key again. Really bouncing. We're going to call that 88. I just saw that number the most. Skeleton key again. We'll call that 84. Another tiny skeleton key. 63, we'll call that. Thimble. Call that 60. Dog tag. Very thinned out. 40. Bolo tie. Oh my God, if you two touch this board, God help you. Bolo tie. Seventy. I'm watching you. Still watching you. Bridal pin. 
89. Uh, this pen, uh, probably Air Force. 93. Okay, so our board is filling up. As you can see, uh, we have a high of 95 going all the way down to zero. And we've got a big gap in here right now from 10 all the way to 39 where we have, I'm sorry, to 40 where we have this dog tag and then another gap from 41 to 53. And then you have a range, uh, high mid-tones we'll call it, um, two higher tones uh, where you see uh, skeleton keys, where you see pull tabs, uh, where you see bullets, and uh, the upper end of bullets and keys, of course, is the somewhere between mid-tone and high-tone. I mean, these boards, you know, there's three of them. You could consider this, this one high-tones, this one mid-tones, this one low-tones. And that one goes to 42. I mean, in fairness, I overshot the numbers to 109 so we could really say like in segments of like 33 you know low tones mid tones high tones since the scale goes up to 99 all right now we are getting to the funnest part at least i think uh, we're going to do some uh, silver right now we're not going to do silver coins yet uh, we'll save that for last we're going to do silver non-coins then we're going to do gold and then we'll finish up with American coins. All right, we got a lot of uh, silver to go through and I'm not gonna do this one at a time. Uh, that would be pretty painful for the viewer, but I'm gonna point out a few things. One, uh, here's a piece that has some gold and silver in it. Now gold is a, let me show you actually, let's get something. Where's my pure gold? Here we go. This is actually, it's not pure, it's 22K. Um, 22K, almost pure gold. Now, let's take a look. Now, watch this. Let's combine that with this ring, this big, chunky silver ring. So, I'm going to put it in the same hand. Now, watch this. Silver takes over the gold. Now watch this. Let's put sil let's isolate the silver. This is just going to be the silver. So it's an additive process putting these together. It's going to bounce because it is not a, you know, solid object. It's different if these were melted together and, um, you know, you get a very different ring up. But if you, my point is with something like what I just showed you, which I can't remember where I put it down, or something like this. This has gold and silver in it too. The high conductor takes over the low conductor. That's very important for you to remember, okay? So if you're gold hunting and you, you know, see this high tone and you skip it well you know what actually it, it could be a mistake here's the other one because there could be some gold connected to the silver i've found several pieces uh, that are like that in fact let's do those together this is a ring same thing it's gold and silver the silver is going to take it over That actually surprises me how high it rang up. 95 to 97, geez. All right, we're gonna call that a 95. That's actually a shocker right there. I'm surprised. There's differences in each one of these. I've done this for the Equinox. I have done this for the Legend. I've done this for the Simplex. And this is the fourth detector that I've done this with. And each time, uh, there are surprises that happen. That was a surprise. So here's the uh, other one, you know, gold and silver. 85. Now let's actually turn this around. Still 
still 85, 86. We'll call that an 86, actually. I saw more 86s. Gold and silver ring. Same. That's crazy. Okay, that's different. That's very different. Let's put that together with that. Gold and silver, 95. All right, here's another gold and silver ring. 85 on this one. This is an interesting one. You got a silver uh, pen holder with a gold tip. It's mostly silver. 94. All right, so these two are gonna be interesting case studies. Um, this one as well. It is thin pieces of silver. In other words, these are hollowed out. It's not thick, it's hollowed out. Seventy-one we'll call that, and that's even higher than I expected because that landed um that was somewhere in the teens or twenties. So but seventy-one for this. Teens or twenties on the Nocta legend. So it, we're seeing differences in the way that it is reading silver in the presence of other materials. All right, here's another one. Uh, this one is 925. 60. And this one. That's high. 88. Another thing that I want to point out to you, at least in other detectors, uh, chains are going to ring up lower. Uh, it's not as condensed, you know, it's not like all melted together. It's meant to be flexible, um, you know, movable. Uh, so, you know, it's spaced out a little bit more. And that's the case here too. This is a 49. All right, so I'll be back if there's any other anomalies. If not, everything's gonna be put on the board and we will take a look at where it falls. This is pure silver, and this was higher than expected. Ninety-nine. This is absolutely shocking to me. This was one of the highest ringer-uppers on the legend scale. So watch. What? 87. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. This was also very high. Call that 95. This was the one that I put with the piece of the gold before. 95. Wow. Every time I learn something, I'm telling you. All right, yeah, this is a shocker. This is heavy as heck, okay? Um, I got the legend out. You gotta see this. Fifty-five to fifty-eight. Okay, so the Nocta legend that is on a scale of sixty, and the Deus it goes to a scale of ninety-nine. For that to be an eighty-seven, that's just bizarre. You know that is a chunky silver ring. Um, I am stumped with this one. That's what I would call an anomaly. Okay, well, spoon. <laughs> Depending upon the part that's centered, um, 98, 99, um, silver spoon, we'll call that a 98, I saw that number more than anything else. Another ring coming in, very high, call that 97. Okay, so this is a piece of silver, very hollow. Forty-nine. All right, I think I'm solving this issue because this was a pretty solid ring up on the um, legend, and this one was too. But if you look at this, this splits apart, and this in here, it also has uh, a break 
in the metal and you know everything is reading non-ferrous of course there's no iron in here but this is a clearly a silver ring I mean it's in a regular shape it doesn't know where to lock into that's uh, a big part of it and the same thing with this let me just close it again to get it connected I think I'm gonna keep these separate I don't know where to put them on the scale so um, I'm noticing anything that is not closed that's rounded but not closed you're getting very erratic ring ups okay I'm making progress you know I got a lot of stuff on the board here but this is really bizarre like if you look at the thickness of this versus this and they're both silver watch 85 92 this is the thinner one 92 85 what one observation that I've made is you want to do this fast 84 you get the most it, it's made to be swung fast um, you get the most accurate target IDs if you swing it fast 84 that was consistent with both here's another interesting one so we have this uh, cross medallion here 89 and we have this little little pendant that is bent 91 more silver content in this but um, that rings up higher and the staining again that's because it's uh, found at uh, Dead Horse Bay just Google Dead Horse Bay and you'll you know if you're not from the area so 89 91 we are making progress 91 yeah we are filling this board we'll do a review of the silver section in a second okay i just went through more than a handful of silver items that were not silver coins and the lowest of all of them came in at 47 so we had a 47 this uh, chain you know the chains the earrings that makes sense you know these are hollowed out so you see less of that and uh, there were definite surprises uh, there was a whole range these are hollowed out also but um, yeah for instance if I recall this was a lot higher on the uh, not the legend scale there's nuances to each detector that you really got to know and that's why doing this is so valuable and uh, again, I got a cheat sheet for you, uh, a book, so make sure that you get that. The hyperlink's in the description. Um, but yeah, surprises all over the place. There's that uh, 87. Here, this. I still can't believe this. Yeah, that was at the top of the scale last time. But uh, we're getting there. Now it's time for some gold. What's been a surprise so far is that this part of the board is so empty. I did find something that rang up at 35 in here. This is the foil range in here, uh, but it's also the gold range. Now, we're going to get some gold in this section, if anything is like last time, uh, in the low silver section. And uh, it, it should really fill this entire range. So, yeah, let's... Let's get to some gold. So first things first, rose gold, you know, that is, it has copper in it. Call that 77 right there. That last rose gold ring was a uh, 10K. Uh, this is also 10K and rose gold 75. 14K simple wedding band 70 size effects ring up uh, this is indeed gold this is a, uh, a school ring that I found never was able to track down the owner 
and um, 80 10k also okay we got rose gold once again 70 this is one of the chunkiest rings I have ever found right here 14k 77. So this was stuff that was all 11 to 20 on the Nocta Legend scale. Oh, I didn't show you. This is a 14K uh, Lion. 41, we'll call that. Yeah, if anything is going to cover this part of the board, it's going to be the stuff in here. 14K small gold pendant 41 14k gold ring that's the most common one 49 again 14k 47 we'll call that 10k 42 18k 52 14k 48 14k clip stamped that was for a watch, I believe. 49. This is an interesting one. Tested at 14K, it is hollow on the inside. 50. Little Mickey Mouse earring. 14K. 40. 14K earring stud. 44. Aha! Earring. This, if I remember correctly, is 14K also. 31. 14K chain. Call that a 43. I'm sorry that we fought before. We're friends. Just don't mess with the board. I've been doing a lot of work and I know you like to break things. I know you like to break things. All right, back to work. Here is baby Jesus raising the roof. Forty. 10K white gold with diamonds. Ooh. 31. Wow. 14K gold ring. 10K. And this might actually be, it's got a marking for 10K. This one actually might be multiple types of metal in it. 49. This is um, Cartier uh, 14K. 52. You know, this is where that scale to 99 goes, and this is one of the good things. You're seeing more of a separation between the gold and the silver. Oh man, there are definite, definite uh, tricky ones, but for the most part, uh, there's a clear a more clear separation between the gold and the silver. Then again, you know what? What am I saying? We haven't gotten to the higher ringing gold yet. So let's uh, let's keep going. 14K, this is a bracelet. 52. Perhaps my all-time favorite find. These are my grills. Gr Everybody needs to find a pair of grills once in their life, okay? 10K. 47. This is a cut ring, okay? It says 14K on it. And I just hit my machine, sorry. Thirty-two. Gold signet ring. I think it's called that. You know, the ones with the flat top. Fifty-one, that's fourteen K little part of a gold chain 35 
All right, so I got a lot to do for your viewing pleasure, unless if it's just something that is really a teachable moment, I'm going to fill the board, okay? This one is platinum. So I haven't shown you platinum yet. 42. This one's a combination of rose gold and uh, 14K gold. 46. Okay, so again, we've been in basic, I'm sorry, general for the entire time. Look at how close you have to be for this. Usually this thing goes forever. 31, a little piece of gold, 14K, earring. This is just such a cool piece. Yellow diamonds and white diamonds. Um, 14K, white gold. 41. We still have a large gap from 30 all the way to 10. And... Oop, just knocked that. I'll show you what this is. 34, and this is a little gold chain. 34. Could they have been trying to like really, really separate iron by giving no target IDs to this? I mean, I've seen foil in this range, but everything is really top heavy on this scale. So I think the reason that they were going for a scale to 99 was so that you could have this clear separation from iron. But that brings us back to these. This is indeed a piece of gold. <laughs> it does that on every detector. But, uh, you know, that is, uh, that's been the case. Zero two. I don't know. Maybe there's an armature underneath uh, that is of uh, iron. I, I don't know. These ones too. But anyway, let's get back to the gold. It's an interesting experiment doing this. Here's our almost pure 22K. Sixty. And again, depending upon how you have it balled up. 59 yeah we'll call that 60 though here's a really tiny one with a relatively big diamond um, 14k 40 Houston we have a problem look here so we have this tiny really super thin gold chain right here and nothing and as you can see, I don't have anything, um, I have no discrimination on. I've notched everything down so that I could have the entire scale. Now let's do the same thing on the legend. Okay, listen very carefully. It's going to be faint. 911, it's getting it. Would I dig that? No, I found this uh, mudlarking Dead Horse Bay. But it is a verified, tested, little piece of gold. So it's not getting that on the dais. It's actually getting this here. Hmm. All right, we finally found something that is lower than 30. number I see the most is uh, 25 here but I'm surprised at the and I'm gonna have to like mess with the settings surprised with the lack of uh, reactivity to gold here shut up dogs jeez they clearly like the dais and they're they're really upset that I said that but this is a 25 25 They reacted. This is not reactive enough. They reacted. All right, we are still working on the gold, but that was the stuff that rang up the lowest on the legend. And uh, you can see there's a gap. 10 through 24, there's a buffer. Why is there a buffer there? I was not expecting that. So 
we have the higher ringing up gold to do, but for the most part, uh, with the exception of the coins and the gold we're about to do, we're, we're in the home stretch now. Okay, this is something also that is uh, uh, has a written 14K mark on it. And look at this ring up. What the heck am I doing? I'm ringing up the camera. Jeez, nice job. That's arguably a 99. You know, it's asymmetrical, it's irregular in shape. So that makes it jumpy. I'm gonna say 99 for this. So this is another interesting case study right here. This is the only piece of jewelry that I have that is marked 24K. Um, the thing is, I tested it and it's somewhere between 18 and 24. 68, great. Dropped it, fresh drop. 68. Big piece of platinum here. Seventy. 14k white gold. 62. This one kind of makes sense. Um, it is a Pandora gold over silver. So they plated gold over it. We'll call that a 93. 14k clip on earring at 67. That rings up the same as this. 10K gold small diamond ring. 57. That's actually the first 57 of the day. I think that was the last gap. We have everything from 99. Hmm. We have a few more. 39, 37, yeah, those are going to be gaps. But uh, for most part, in this range, everything is filled. I am unsure of the gold content in this. I do believe it's plated. It's pretty heavily plated. Um, and it's very heavy. But... 64. 18K ring. Wow. 86. This might have some silver in it, but um, this was brought to the jeweler and verified 18K. No engraving on this one. This one is pretty clear uh, plated gold. 94. It's like showing off my babies. <laughs> I know I said I'd skip a lot, but uh, yeah. Anywho, yeah, this is uh, 10K. 65. One of my all-time favorites. 14K diamond. 60. Religious pendant, very close to 24K. 57. 14K sparkly. 77, but it's chunky. More chunky gold. 14K, 63. All right, we are in the home stretch. Go, go, go. White gold, 56. This is the only time I found a diamond of another color, yellow diamond. 53. Chunky gold, this is an interesting one. That's higher than most gold. Uh, that I have ever gotten. 82. Another one where gold on the outside, there's gold on the outside and there's silver on the inside. Silver takes over the gold, 87. This is gold. I originally thought platinum, but uh, this is gold. Um, it's been tested. Bunch of tiny diamonds in it. One of my old time favorites. 53. Gold and diamonds. 14k. 61. All right, only coins to do. Let's do a wrap 
of the gold and see where the gold range is. This is bizarre, okay? Now this one, again, it's marked. It has been tested. I'm not saying there's much gold content and I have no doubt that it's mixed with other metals. This rang up at a 99 and it was not nearly, it was a high ring up on other detectors, but not nearly this high. This, this is gold plated. Okay, 99, big ring, that makes sense. Um, the one that blew my mind, you know, this is 100% verified. So is that. 100% um, verified, you know, this one was a consistent, you know, 95 uh, ring up. So the gold range pulled up here is if we're a few uh, specific rings, it, it, it really went a lot higher. And I'm curious what's up with that. This was another one that's been tested. Um, yeah. So there's that. So we'll, we'll call, we'll say the normal gold range. This 82, um, 84 here. Um, this is 18K at 85. So 85 all the way to 25. I know you're probably looking for me to give you some guidelines. Yeah, uh, 25 to 30, that's your, that's where you dig. Well, I could say that uh, 30 all the way to 70, you see the highest volume of gold. So, I mean, that is the normed gold range. You know, again, we have these that are super low aberrations I'm telling you you leave these uh, you know this tutorial with the idea okay I'm gonna dig everything if it sounds good I'm gonna dig it and that's pretty much the conclusion that I come to every single time I'm really starting to see the nuances between the different detectors and how target ID is not just target ID um, there's a few quirks uh, maybe to the wiring and the programming rather than the wiring um, of these different detectors but uh, you know for the most part conductivity you know you have the low conductors you have the high conductors but uh, there's some that are really wild so these absolutely hideous coins are called zincans and there's zinc on the inside and they are copper on the outside and as you could see they really corrode eventually the zinc uh, swells out breaches the copper and uh, you get a lumpy coin like this and watch this 45 how does that sound you're like let's see let's see what else is at 45 oh geez it's the land of gold chains so you're thinking hmm I got myself a fat gold chain. No, you got yourself a Zinkin. That's not a normal ring up for a Zinkin. That's after it has been, you know, stretched. 81. Just take my word for it. I'm going to go through these. 83. 78. 82. That's more the normal range. But, again... Zinc in 76, they could appear anywhere in this range. But for the most part, it's in that uh, high 70s, low 80s range. So we're going to reflect that. Here's a zinc in, or zinc penny at 84. This is an almost new one, zinc penny 85. Now just take my word for it, okay? Out of all of the coins, uh, the most variance that you're going to get is with pennies. And there's been different um, formulas used over the years, but these are memorial pennies. Um, these were from the last video. You're going to see a range 89 to 91. That was a 91. 89. 90. 89. So 89 to 91 is your range with pennies, with uh, memorial pennies. Oh, wheat pennies, you gotta love them. They just are so different, not having the memorial on the back. You're gonna see a range from 88 to 92 with wheat cents. That's a 92. 
88. No, 87. 90. 91. All right, so we put 87 to 92 on the board for wheat cents. Now, out of all American coins, you're probably going to see the greatest variance with Indian heads. So let's actually start out with... Oh, let me find it. i got to find the fat Indian head. All right, fat Indian head penny. 75. Let's put that on the board alone. 75. It's within the Indian head range, but let's look at this. 85. I wouldn't be doing my job with this if I didn't show you this. 82. 77. These are all Indian heads. 85. 80. 81. 80. 77, 81. So we get a range with Indian heads. All right, we got seven large cents to test, including, oh my baby, look at that. That is my um, cap bust, wait, cap bust? Whatever the hell it's called, that's my baby. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do that one first. 90. And let's do the rest. Sorry. Ninety-six. You see variants in pennies. Eighty-eight. Ninety-five. Ninety-seven. Ninety-eight. I'm telling you, in terms of you know thickness there's no difference in thickness this is just this has always been the case you'll see with more modern coins like modern clad there's very little variance but uh, with these large scents there is a quite a bit of variance so these are sporadic you know i put four on the board for 98 one for 96 one for 95 my baby goes at 89 and 88. So there's a range with large cents. Just my two cents dig everything. Oops, switch hands. 87 for the two cent piece. Here is my one and only flying eagle. Fly! 73. To round out pennies, here is a Civil War token. 87. I got a half cent for you. Let's see. 89. Three state coppers. 95. 89. 91. We are going for three. Trime. 74. All right, let's stay in the same size range, but go for five. This is a half dime. 1840. 86. Regular non silver nickels. 63. 62, 63, 64, 63, 62 to 64 we will call that. Now here's the thing, you could have normal ringy up war nickels, 62, and this was from 1944. 64, 1942, and then there's some really wild ones. This is from 1943, 72. 
So these are wild cards also. Buffalo nickels have little variance. 63, 63. You know, same on the scale as uh, regular clad nickels. So 63, I've seen them at 64 also. Now we are going into the world of V-nickels. Now look at this. 58. 62, that's normal. 61, a little bit low. 62. So general rule on the low side of the nickel scale. Got two shield nickels out. 61, that's on the low side. That's on the low side too. I've seen lower than that, uh, but you know what? We're going to going to stick with what they are today. So we'll, we'll call them 61. Clad dimes, 91. 91. Silver Roosevelt dimes, yep, a little higher, 94. 94. Mercs, again, these were all tested, uh, at, you know, in my last video with the Legend. Uh, so these are the ones that had a variance in range. 93. 93. These usually go a little bit higher than regular dimes. Actually, that's true. Regular dimes were 90, 91. So these are 93. The Rosies were solid at 94. That's interesting. Generally speaking, the Barbers and Seated Dimes, they are lower than Rosies and Mercs. And that's the case here. 91, 91. And that's right in line with a Clad Dime. So let's put it right next to that Clad Dime. Seated Dimes, 87. 92 wow so wide range this one's a little bit thinned out um, so that's probably um, I might actually take this one out this was 87 you see how this is thinner here mm. all right we'll put we'll put that there and we'll mention that it's thinned out and this one was 92 which actually is a little bit higher than um, the clad dime. Clad quarter is very stable. 95.96. Interesting. There's some separation with the Washington silver quarter. 98. 97.98. 97.98 again. SLQ, standing liberty quarter. 96.97 solid 96 96.97 we'll put these so slightly higher than a clad quarter barber quarter 95.96 this one at least I haven't found many I have found two uh, in my life uh, this one was right exactly the same as the clad quarter Seated quarter. 97, slightly higher. I bet if the barber was in better condition, uh, it would be similar to, so 97. Franklin half, uh, walking liberty, and seated half. Let's do walking liberty. 98. 97 for the Franklin. 98 for the seated dollar coins uh, i've never found a morgan this is the closest thing uh, what i found this is a diwali coin same size as a morgan same weight and everything say what this was one of the highest ringer uppers on the scale with the legend wow and we also have this What? These are ringing up lower than the halves. How is that even possible? 
I don't get it. All right, we got some reals to finish up. Let's do the half reals. 85. 89, let's put that on the board. Okay, watch this, these two coins. 89. ring up exactly the same. How is that possible? We have three one reals and one two real coming your way. 90. This one. 90. And 90. All three were 90. And finally, the two real. OMG. Did you hit the like button yet? This was a lot of work. 92. Well, if nothing else, we were thorough here. <laughs> so I realized this video is over an hour and I realized that putting all of this is tough to consume, putting it all together. So that's where the book comes in. Again, we put an awful lot of work into this. There's a lot of value in this book. All you have to do is look at the different pages, especially with the ring-ups. Um, there are general tips. Uh, we got everything in this book uh, that will help you understand target ID for the XP Deus 2. So I hope that you uh, give it a try, and I hope you enjoyed this video.